This is Film Bookcast. Film Bookcast. Film Bookcast. The official podcast of Film Book. Get ready for the latest in film news, TV show news, and theatrical reviews. Film Book's podcast starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Film Bookcast, the official podcast of Film Book. My name is Chris Banks. If you're tuning into Film Bookcast for the first time, First of all, welcome, and what I do on this podcast is discuss the latest film and TV show news. I also review an in-theater film. You can find more about Film Bookcast on film-book.com by using the search term Film Bookcast. You can also email us at podcast at film-book.com with Film Bookcast in the subject line. Let's jump right into the news this week. Let's head on over some TV show news now. Lee Tolan Krieger will direct the first two episodes of the Green Lantern HBO Max series. Lee Tolan Krieger, known for Superman and Lois and Riverdale, is set to direct the first two episodes of Green Lantern, HBO Max's upcoming series based on the DC characters. Written by Greg Berlanti and many others, Green Lantern reinvents the classic DC property through a story spanning decades and galaxies. Beginning on Earth in 1941 with the very first Green Lantern, secretly gay FBI agent Alan Scott in 1984 with a cocky alpha male Guy Gardner, played by Finn Wittrock, and half-alien Bree Jarda. They'll be joined by a multitude of, of other lanterns from comic book favorites to never-before-seen heroes. Green Lantern marks Krager's first project for HBO Max and continues his frequent collaboration with Berlanti Productions and WBTV. In some more TV news, some exciting news, Moonlight Breakout star Trevante Rhodes will play Mike Tyson in Hulu's upcoming series about the boxing legend. The series titled Iron Mike hails from the team behind Tonya Harding's biopic I, Tonya. Rhodes will also be an executive producer. He's best known for playing the adult Sheeran in Barry Jenkins' Oscar-winning Moonlight. He also went on to appear in Bird Box and the United States vs. Billie Holiday. Iron Mike will explore the wild, tragic, and controversial life and career behind one of the most polarizing figures in sports culture. In an interesting twist, there's another Mike Tyson series in development, executive produced by Martin Scorsese and directed by Anton Fukua. And apparently, that biopic is authorized by Mike Tyson, but the Hulu series has been blasted by Mike Tyson for misappropriating a lot of his culture and by using his story in an, un- in an, in an unauthorized nature. In some more TV news, Netflix has set the full cast for First Kill, its upcoming vampire drama series executive produced by Emma Roberts. Joining leads Sarah Catherine Cook and Imani Lewis are Lost alum Elizabeth Mitchell, Oban Wise, Jason Robert Moore, Gracie Dezeni, Will Swenson, Philip Mulligs Jr., Dominic Goodman, and Dylan McNamara. First Kill is based on a story by Victoria V.E. Schwab. In it, when it's time for teenage vampires Juliet, played by Hook, to make her first kill so she can take her place among a powerful vampire family, she sets her sights on a new girl in town named Calliope, played by Lewis. And much to Juliet's surprise, Calliope is a vampire hunter who's a family of celebrated slayers. Both find that the other won't be so easy to kill, and unfortunately, way too easy to fall for. Very interesting show coming from Netflix. Let's switch up gears. Film news. At long last, Searchlight Pictures has dated Wes Anderson's The French Dispatch. It's coming out October 22nd of this year. The date announcement comes with confirmation that Anderson's star-studded new film will world premiere at the upcoming Cannes Film Festival in July and also play at the 59th New York Film Festival in the fall. The movie was named an official selection of Cannes last year and was originally going to open on July 24th of last year before the pandemic first bumped it to October 16th and now to October 22nd. The The film is a love letter to journalists set in an outpost of an American newspaper in a fictional 20th century French city and brings to life a collection of stories published in the French Dispatch magazine. The ensemble cast includes Bill Murray, Timothy Chalamet, Francis McDormand, Bob Balaman, Jeff Goldblum, Owen Wilson, and many others. Anderson's longtime cinematographer Robert Eumann shot the film. Timothy stars as a student revolutionary named Zeffrelli whose story appears to be a few nods from the Novel v- Vague. In more film news, Sherry Shepard, Mike Manning, Johnny Boochamp, and 
Ashley Murray will star in The Way Out from Barry J. The Way Out is an indie drama which is written and directed by Barry J. He's also producing the picture. Alex Romero, played by Boochamp, is a struggling addict who takes unconventional advice from a, from a manipulative boxer, Shane Collins, played by Manning. As Shane takes Alex under his wing and teaches his fighting techniques, Alex confronts demons from his past while finally taking control of his own life. In spite of being cautioned by his sponsor, played by Shepard, and his best friend, played by Murray, Alex follows Shane's guidance and finds him walking a dark path that jeopardizes not only his sobriety, but also his life. Filming is currently underway. Following along this week in film news is some casting news. Macarena Akada is set to join Andy Garcia in the Father of the Bride reboot. The pick will revolve around a Cuban-American family, with Matt Lopez penning the script. The film will tell the story of a father coming to grips with his daughter's upcoming wedding through the prism of the multiple relationships within a big, sprawling Cuban-American family. It will be more than a rom-com than previous versions of the film. While this will mark the third iteration of the story, sources say that this will be more in the vein of the original Spencer Trey pick and not the Steve Martin franchise from the 90s. Akaga will play the stepmother to the groom. Gloria Estevan is set to play Garcia's wife, with Adria Arjona tapped to play the bride-to-be. Diego Bonetta is on the board to play the groom. The Father of the Bride reboot will be on HBO Max, but no release date and no filming date is set yet. Let's head on over to some TV show trailers now. From Apple TV Plus is coming a new series called Physical. It stars Rose Byrne, Deidre Friel, Rory Scovell. It's about a woman struggling in her life as a quietly tortured housewife when she finds an unconventional path to power through an unlikely source, the world of aerobics. The series will debut June 18th on Apple TV+, Plus, and check out the trailer now. Another TV trailer from AMC Plus is Kevin Can F Himself, a story about a woman who keeps playing a perfect housewife. Then one day, she realizes what she really wants, to kill her husband. Annie Murphy stars in Kevin Can F Himself, and it comes to AMC this summer. Check out the trailer, because it's very interesting how they juxtapose a show within a show. Super cool. Annie's amazing. Another awesome trailer this week is An Evil So Big It Can Play on Two Networks. Chucky the TV series is coming out. Check out the trailer. It's super cool the way it's presented. After a vintage Chucky doll turns up at a suburban yard sale, an idyllic American town is thrown into chaos as a series of horrifying murders begin to expose the town's hypocrisies and secrets. Now let's check out some film trailers for this week. A really cool trailer is called Lansky. It stars Sam Worthington and Harvey Keitel. It's a true story of a renowned but down to earth of a renowned but down on his luck writer who has the opportunity of a lifetime when he receives a surprise call from Mayor Lensky. For decades, authorities have been trying to locate Lansky, alleges nine figure fortune, and this is their last last chance to capture the aging gangster before he dies. With the FBI close behind, the godfather of organized crime reveals the untold truth about his life as a notorious boss of Murder, Inc. and the National Crime Syndicate. An amazing trailer. I can't wait to see Lansky. Harvey Keitel is amazing. Check out the trailer for Lansky. It'll be released June 25th. Another really cool film trailer is a film called Old. It'll come out in July. It's by Midnight Shyamalan. It's a chilling, mysterious new thriller about a family on a tropical holiday who discover that the secluded beach where they're relaxing for a few hours is somehow causing them to age rapidly, reducing their entire lives into a single day. A super cool trailer. Check out the trailer for Old. Rounding out the week in film trailers is more of a teaser, but is it Trust or Control and After We Fell? It's a new movie that'll come out in October. October, I'm pretty sure. Just as Tessa makes the biggest decision of her life, everything changes. Revelations about her family and then hardens. Throw everything they knew before in doubt and makes their hard-won future together more difficult to claim. It seems like a very interesting kind of horror love story. Check out the trailer for After We Fell. Alright, it's time for this week's movie review. We're gonna check out Here Today. Starring Billy Crystal and Tiffany Haddish. It's about a veteran comedy writer, Charlie Burns, played by Billy Crystal, who meets a New York singer, Emma Page, played by Tiffany Haddish. They form an unlikely yet touching friendship that kicks the generation gap aside and redefines the meaning of love and trust. It just came out in theaters. Um, Penn 
Bagley is in this as well as Anna DeVere and Sharon Stone. Billy Crystal directs this movie. I'm not sure why the Rotten Tomatoes score is so low because the film is a really perfect presentation of here today, gone tomorrow. I think that's what they're going for because Billy Crystal plays Charlie Burns who is a comedy writer who is diagnosed with late stage dementia or some kind of degenerative cognitive disease. So, but the way that that is told is so beautiful. They don't give you it all at once. You, you, the story's written in a way that it's very, very satisfying and, and really kind of eye-opening to see how Charlie is hiding this truth from people. And Tiffany Haddish plays Emma Page, who is a New York singer killing it in her own way. But she's, she's the new school and he's the old school. She does such a good job, no matter what she does, the synopsis telling us that the movie attempts to redefine the meaning of love and trust is actually true because, you know, too much of our culture is at war with one another. You know, the older generation doesn't like what the newer generation is doing. The newer generation just wants to pretend like the older generation never lived and didn't do anything. And this movie, and I'm, I wonder if Billy Crystal did this for this reason, but this movie really shows you that there's a lot more to understand between one another. You know, because Charlie Burns and Emma Page are two completely different people. And through the story, and also through Emma's surrendering of the self a little bit, the two meet, and they become really close. And it's actually extremely beautiful the way that it is told, because I'm lucky enough to have similar relationships in my life where I have people from entirely, entirely different generations with entirely different understandings of the world. But when you surrender the self and our ego and you just kind of connect with the person, which is what Emma Page does when she learns that Charlie is going through what he's going through, you get to see how much more there is to learn from one another and how much fun there is to have with one another and how much you can share with the other person. I think that this movie is a perfect, perfect movie to be released post-pandemic in the theater. And I'm just disappointed by the score. I'm disappointed by people's lack of appreciation for what that film is because it's a perfect blend of everything we need right now and honestly charlie burns is one of the best characters billy's played in a little bit it's perfect for him it's a perfect role he's funny there's flares of the old billy in there tiffany's amazing she does great no matter what she's doing she's a hurricane right then peg pen bagley does a really good job too everyone does a great job in this film it's a really well done movie, and it's actually, ext I'm not sure the origins of it, but the more that Emma connected with Charlie, the more Charlie told and trusted Emma with more and more and more. And it's just a story of trust and love and what you get when you open yourself up and you trust another, maybe from a completely different generation or someone who looks entirely different than you do. But they recognize that. And they seek to connect with you over that. And it's a very worthwhile experience and a very rewarding thing to do. And I just wish more people would see this movie. Because I think the more people that see this movie would understand just how perfect it is. The title is Here Today, but I think he goes for like a Here Today, Gone Tomorrow kind of thing. Because we have to share our stories. Older people need to share us with their stories or else we will never know. And history and personal history and family history and oral history, these are the stitches that hold us together as a global community in, what, in whatever country you live in. That's why we share stories and we have to recognize just how beautiful this film is. And Billy does a great job directing it. The directing is very good. I hope he. I don't know what I want to see him more as as a director, or, or a, I want. I still want to see Billy be Billy, you know. And Tiffany is amazing, no matter what she does. So I just want to. I want to keep seeing her. And this movie is a really well done movie. I'll give it a seven out of ten. Go check it out before they pull it out of out of the theater. I'm sure that they're going to pull it out soon because nobody's going to see it, unfortunately. But it's a great movie. Here today, go check it out. I hope you like it as much as I did.
Thank you so much for checking us out this week. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Film Bookcast. You can find more of my work on film-book.com. Just search for Chris Banks or Film Bookcast. You can also find me on Twitter. I'm at cbanksy. That's S-E-E Banksy. I'm also on Instagram. I'm at the Chris Banks. If you listen to this podcast on iTunes or another podcast service, please rate and review this episode. If you are listening to this podcast on our YouTube channel, Film Book Podcast, please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment in the comments section. It really helps other people discover our podcast. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons at Patreon at patreon.com slash filmbook. Your support helps us create more engaging content. You'll find our Patreon link below in the description. If you want to tweet about this podcast, just use the hashtag FilmBookCast. Tune in next week for the next episode of the FilmBookCast. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you then.